Hi, so in this uh, video I'm going to revisit the DOOR programme. So the DOOR programme, D-O-R-E, for anyone who doesn't know, um, is a series of exercises that were developed to help with uh, dyslexia and other spectrum disorders, but chiefly dyslexia. Uh, the guy who invented it, Winford DOOR, he, um, his daughter was severely dyslexic, so he designed these exercises to, to help her and he made it into a business um, to help other people. Um, so there used to be a lot of these exercises um, on YouTube. Um, in fact, there was a whole list of them. I think they've come down now because the business has changed hands. Um, so I had to go at some of them. I thought they were good exercises, but I also felt they were a bit time consuming. Um, and I can see that they would certainly address, um, some of the issues in dyslexia, like with coordination. Um, you use the balance board a lot to address balance, that is really good. Um, there's things like picking things up from the floor and going around um, and spinning around with, with your eyes shut. I don't remember seeing that one but that one is certainly quoted. That is good as well because it helps adjust your balance a bit better and if I remember rightly there's kind of cross coordination so it might be standing on one leg and t touching your foot with your opposite with your opposite hand or something like that um, and that is uh, quite quite an important thing as well um, so sadly they're not up there anymore um, I was doing them to see if they would actually help with my eyesight and they did help a little bit at the time. Um, I'm kind of revisiting them again and they seem to be helping them helping a bit more or what I can remember of them. Um, so with, with the door exercises um, the main criticism really was that they were quite expensive. Um, they they worked very well for some people, um, not for others, but that's, you know, that's the same with everything. Um, if, you, if you're given a medicine, it's going to work for some people, for some people it's not because they'll need a different medicine. So, um, I, th I think, um, you know, it's the case that some things are going to work for some people very well, partially for others and not for some, that's that's normal. Um, also the, the dyslexia, the British Dyslexia Association uh, didn't endorse this programme, um, it damned it with quite faint, faint praise. But then again the British Dyslexia Association um, it doesn't endorse coloured overlays or glasses um, that help some people with dyslexia. Um, and again, it kind of damns them with faint praise. So that that's, um, that's what I found with the British Dyslexia Association. Um, it's not that they're against it per se. You know, they, they'll say things like, well, some people feel these things help them, and you know that that's that. So that's kind of their stance on a lot of things, anyway. So with dyslexia, um, it does seem that you know everybody has a part of the elephant. Um, if you've ever heard of Kipling's poem, "The Six Blind Men and the Elephant." Um, they all touch a bit of different part of the elephant and they think that 
the part that they've touched is the whole ele elephant. Like one grabs hold of the tail and says, oh, it's, it's like a rope. The elephant is like a rope. Another one grabs hold of the leg and says, oh, the elephant is very like a tree. And, you know, they, they all got their different part that they touch. Um, so they all argue with each other about what the elephant is like. And they're all a little bit right, but because they can't see the whole, they're completely wrong. And I think dyslexia uh, is a bit like that because we don't, um, we don't actually have the whole picture. Um, I mean, when Winford Dorr has his stance, uh, the BDA have their stance, and their stance actually is that it's um, it's a language, it's a language development disorder. I hope I've got that right. Um, and of course, um, there's also people who have their stance that it, it's an eyesight problem. Um, you know, which is nearer to my stance, and certainly because there aren't adequate checks for long sightedness, for long sightedness for hyperopia, this actually is getting mixed, uh, not mixed, missed. Hard day at work today. <laughs> this aspect um, needs to be tried and tested brought into the picture properly, um, you know, if it if it's found to be nothing to do with it, then that, that's fine. But at the moment, um, you know, hy hyperopia doesn't even, you know, get um, tested properly in ordinary situations, uh, let alone where, where dyslexia is concerned. So, yeah, that, that is something that does need to change because that would be another bit of the puzzle, um, I think. Um, so, I've been looking at, um, apparently, uh, Winford Dorr, he's put up a lot of videos. Um, he's got his own site on, his own channel on YouTube and I've been having a little look at it and looking at things from his stance and it does seem that um, you know he he had the research um, he was genuinely doing the right thing whether I agree with everything I don't know but you know he had all the research and it seemed to have got blocked by the powers that be um, you know, by by other people who have an interest in dyslexia, um, and I can kind of well believe that that happening. Um, you know, what is one group's personal interests um, a against another? Uh, that that happens, as as we all know, and I I think it's a shame. But there we are. Um, so the people who have been helped by it, um, they, they, you know, they really are, they swear by it. They absolutely swear by it. So, you know, the, the people who feel it's helped them or their children, they're very, very passionate about it, ready to talk about it. Um, and... There's a couple of rugby players that say that, you know, they tried they tried it out, it helped them. Um, so that, that interested me, because these are adults, um, they're sportsmen, I, th I think it was two. Um, so two sportsmen, um, and you, you'd think... Well, a professional sportsman, they they would have balance skills, they would have coordination skills, um, you know, all the things that you think a sportsman would have. Um, 
but they actually benefited from these exercises. So obviously they had one set of skills, um, but the fun, the core skills, as it were, um, it appeared they did need some help with that. So, you know, they did these exercises. And if the, the adults, the sportsmen, are saying, wow, that actually helped me. I can function better, this, 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 and this. Um, and certainly the guy who bought uh, Winford Dawes business, who's taken it over now, the way he describes it as having helped him, um, that rings very, very true to me because he describes the process of how his brain was switching on. This was not a sales pitch um, because unless you've been in that position yourself, um, you know, where something isn't quite functioning correctly and then the bits kind of fall into place. Um, it is, it's kind of, it takes one to know one. So, um, I think he was called, uh, was it Mr. Deneva, Deneva something. Um, but uh, the, the way he described it, he described it a personal aspect um, and most sort of general testimonials, if you're trying to do a sales pitch, is like, you know, they'll use very general terms. This was very specific, very personal, and from the point of view of someone who's kind of had the whole brain switching on um, process, that that does ring very, very true. Um, so, yeah, that's my take on it at the moment. Um, I've got another video I'd like to upload about this soon, looking at uh, someone's critique of uh, Winford Dorso. So, yeah.